morning, Christ Place. What great worship today to prepare our hearts for the Word. You have a Bible? We value the power of God's Word at Christ Place. And today we're going to be in John chapter 6, the Gospel of John chapter 6. It's going to take a few moments for me to get there in the message, so be patient, but have your spot open to John 6 as uh, we dive in. Something that you need today, many of you came to church with your uh, Living Generously Challenge card, so you have it with you. You've been thinking about it, praying about it, and we're going to be using this in a moment. If uh, you're new to Christ's place or you've missed a couple weeks, we're in a series called Live Generously. We're going to be using this card today, so find one. They're all around you in the seat pocket of someone's seat in front of you. Take one and uh, get ready to hold it in your hand in a moment, and we're going to walk through that together. Hey, let me give a few announcements before we uh, dive into the scriptures today. So March 1st today, welcome to a new month. Next Sunday is that weird weekend where we have to take our clocks and spring forward. So that means, that means you lose an hour of sleep. That's the Sunday everybody's kind of grumpy on that Sunday. So next Saturday night when you go to bed, let's say you're going to bed at 11, you need to move your clock to 12. Don't go to bed at 11. Go to bed at 8 so you can move your clock to 9. You'll get extra sleep. But just keep that in mind. As we gather next Sunday, it's going to affect us a little bit with the time. Secondly, you need to be here next Sunday because I'm making some pretty big announcements in the morning service. Two big announcements that I'll be making to the church family. First big announcement, you heard that we're going to launch a new campus in uh, August called Christ Place North. We're going to be using the North Hall Community Center. And so I'm going to be announcing who on our pastoral staff will be the pastor of that campus. So make sure you're in your spot next week when we make the big announcement, who will be going to represent us to pastor the congregation up there. And then the second big announcement is about eight months ago, we, uh, we lost our children's pastor, Chad Robertson, Chad and Marie and their son Josiah. We love them a ton and God moved them from us. And so we've been praying about uh, that vacancy and I'm making a big announcement next Sunday who's going to be moving into that slot. We're going to be calling a children's pastor to come and, and lead us in that ministry. So if you've got young children in that ministry, you'll want to be here to hear that big announcement. Okay, so today we're talking about living generously. This is our final message in the series, so we're putting a bow on it today. And I want to talk today on this subject when generosity becomes a movement. So, you know, Many people, you know, can view a series like this and say it's all about money and giving offerings. And that's not true. See, what we're really talking about is growing in Christ's likeness, growing in discipleship. We've been making this statement over and over again. And you know it very well. Look at it on the screen behind me. Generosity is more about what God wants for you than from you. So if you decide not to be generous and you decide not to give of what God has given you, believe me, God's not going to go bankrupt. It's not like God's going to get in a real bad predicament and have to borrow from us. This is something God wants for us. See, when I give, anytime I reach in my pocket and give, I'm not losing anything. I'm gaining something. So it's not like God taking something from you. It's God replacing something in your life. When I'm generous, God shows up in my finances. When Becky and I, as a married couple, are generous, God shows up in our marriage. And so when we are generous, God will use it to change us, to grow us up, to shape us, to mature us, to teach us to trust him. And here's a big bonus. We get to touch other people's lives as well. So don't believe the false narrative that anytime you're generous, you're the loser. You're the winner. You're the winner. It's what God wants for you. Look at this scripture on the screen behind me from Luke chapter 6, verse 38. Give away your life. Will you do that today? Give away your life. You'll find life given back, but not merely given back, given back with bonus and blessing. Giving, not getting is the way. Let me repeat that. Giving not getting is the way. Generosity begets generosity. 
So, you know, when we're talking about generosity, we always come back and we talk about God. Because God is generous. God is so good to us. Yesterday morning, I went up to the hospital to visit one of our members. And so I stayed in about 45 minutes and visited this, this dear friend of mine that's in our church. And he's 88. And he was just talking about all the wonderful blessings of God in his life. And, and, and we had this moment that we could celebrate that all these things that God has done in his 88 years of living, we pointed them back to the generosity of God. God is so generous to you. Right now your heart is beating. Right now you are breathing. You, you're in church. You, you're, you, you have clothes on your body. You had some type of form of transportation to get here you're going to go back to some room, some home, some shelter. And all of that is God's generosity to us. So when we are generous, we are reflecting God's image. Anytime I'm generous to someone with a need, anytime I'm generous with someone that, you know, has a bind or struggle in their life, I'm showing them a picture of the heart of God. So here's what generous living looks like. It's our little definition we've been using every week. Generous living is we're increasingly representing God's heart to the world. Increasingly, that means that we always need to be growing in this. I'm growing. I pray that we're all growing. I want to keep showing my neighbors. I want to keep showing strangers. I want to keep showing you that I love very, very much the heart of God by modeling generosity. And can you imagine the movement that could that could start if we would learn to live generously. You know, we want to reach our region, 16,000 men between the ages of 18 and 35, 100,000 homes that we would like to see manhood repurpose. Could it be that we're on to something here that it can start with generosity? Because when you are generous, it opens up people to you. They want to hear more about your Jesus. And they begin to see your love for them because you are showing them the love of God. I hadn't told you this yet, but there's many meanings for the word generosity or generous. And one of them comes from the Old Testament. It's from, it's a Hebrew root word. And it just simply means uh, to saturate or to overflow like water. And if you could just get that picture in your mind right now, that when we are living generously, think about water flowing, not to endanger someone, but to refresh someone, how it will saturate how it will nurture and nourish everyone around you. And it will all start when we begin to embrace this lifestyle of living generously. So here's the question, going to be very practical today. How can, how can I live generously? How can you live generously? There's many ways to do it. Now, the foundation of living generously always deals with our resources. Because if I'm not going to be generous with my resources, I probably won't be generous with other things. It it always starts with living generously with the material things that God has given you and the money that God has put within your hands. And so I'm a follower of Jesus. And many of you, hundreds of you are like me. You are a follower of Jesus Christ. We're part of his bride, the body of Christ. So the first place that we need to lear learn to live generously is through our local church. So if you're, if you're part of Christ's place, what that means for you is you are generous and you give to God through your church. So we can be literally the body of Christ in our community. We can be the hands and the feet and the heart of Jesus by giving to Christ's place, but we're actually giving through Christ's place. We're giving to our church so that we can meet so many needs. Now, there's a place for all of us to start. We've had this this uh, visual aid up here, it's empty today. Man, we've had yarn in there and jelly beans and water and all kinds of things. So it's empty today because we're going to make a decision. We're going to fill it today. We're going to make a commitment. But here's our pathway. And you know that there's, there's steps that we can all take. And some of us are going to take a beginning step. We're going to become a beginning generous giver. We've never done it in our whole life. Maybe we didn't grow up a home that way. Maybe our dad never modeled it to us. Maybe we never were discipled. I don't know. Lots of reasons why some of us in this room have never learned to live generous by giving to our local church. But some of you are going to take a step, and I'm going to applaud you today. I'm so proud of you that so many will take their first step. And we're not going to look down on anybody because God doesn't look down on you. I was reading a scripture in Deuteronomy. You know when, they, when God gave them the land, the promised land? 
They didn't take all that land at once. They did not conquer the land and move in the land like in 60 minutes. It took a long time. Matter of fact, in Deuteronomy 2.24, it said, begin to take the land. And so God will honor some of us in this room that's just going to take a beginning step. Consistent, generous giver. That's the second step some of you will take. And this just means that you've never really been consistent, but you're going to start. We mail out something every year called a giving statement. Many of you in this room, when you received your giving statement, it can really let you know if you're consistent. I mean, if you look at your giving statement, which which I have no idea, I don't look at any of those. I just look at the one I get for me, my family. But if you look at it, you're like, man, I only gave like once last year or maybe twice last year. That lets you know that God's calling you to become consistent. This is a tither. This is someone that gives 10% of what God blesses them with. It is all in the scripture. So if you're looking for tithing, it's all in the Bible. And it's a very good step to take. And then uh, here's what we call expanding giver. And I was sharing with you, I've been very vulnerable here. I haven't arrived. I'm not perfect. I'm a fellow struggler like all of us in this room. But this is where me and Becky are. We're in the expanding block. We give above the tithe, but we want to grow in this area. We want to expand in this area. We've been doing a lot of talking about that, what that means for us. And this this is an extravagant step. This is someone that God has just given them a windfall. God's just blessed them. They, They just have so much that God's given them, and they just want to give back in an extravagant way. Where yet? Where yet? I'm going to tell you what you hadn't felt in this series. And, and if you have felt this, uh, it's because you had a weird dream at night because it has not happened. You hadn't felt any pressure from me. You hadn't felt any coercion. If you're a guest today and you're like, oh man, the day you invite us to church, he's up there talking about generosity. I'm telling you though, I have been doing this, teaching you God's word with the open Bible and a loving pastoral heart. I came my first week in this series to teach you and challenge you and encourage you. So, so this is not manipulation. This is between you and God. You know that card we're going to give to the altar in a moment? We're not going to give it to the altar. Here, altar. No, no. We're going to bring it to the altar. But you don't even sign it. Don't sign it. We don't want you to sign it. It's between you and God. But we're all taking a step. Look at me. I'm looking at you. Look at me. What step are you going to take? What step are you going to take today? Now, before you answer the question about what step you're going to take, here's the question before the question. Where's your heart? Where's your heart? Because really all of this talk I'm, you know, preaching from God's word today and teaching you, it's all about the heart. Listen to what Jesus said in Matthew 6, verse 19. Don't store up treasures here on the earth where moths eat them and rust destroys and the coronavirus can make a 401 or 101. Well, I'm just uh, added that in the Bible. Okay. And where thieves break in and steal. Store your treasures in heaven. Where moth and rust cannot destroy and thieves do not break in and steal, wherever your treasure is, there the desires of your heart will also be. So wherever your heart is, that's where your treasure is. Does God have your heart? It's impossible to be a mature disciple and not be generous. It's just a heart matter. And you give the Lord all of your heart. He wants all of you. He wants you before he wants your money. And when he has all of you, he has everything. Where's your heart? Here's another question. Who is your leader? Who is your leader? So, you know, when when we started the series, I said, hey, I want us all to get to a position in our life that we can hear God speak about what he wants us to do. And then let's just do what he tells us. So what has God said to you as your leader? He is your leader or you have another leader. Look at Matthew on the screen here. Look at Matthew 6, verse 24. No one can serve two bosses. No one can have two leaders. No one can serve two masters. For you're going to hate one and love the other. You're going to be devoted to one and despise the other. You cannot serve God and be enslaved to money. So we all have to make a decision here. Is Jesus Christ our leader? And if he is, we're going to live generously because that's who Jesus is, he's generous. Or money is our leader. And by the way, both God or the almighty God or the almighty dollar, they both require worship. And they both give orders and demands. And who are you following? You're like, money has no control over me. Man, I can just release it. Okay, let me tell you what a preacher did in another church. He got up on a Sunday and said, 
let me just give an experiment to see if money really doesn't control you. I want everybody to, don't do it, I'm just telling you the story. Take out their wallet. So all the men would take out their wallet. Or the ladies, take your purse. And if you have a wallet in your purse, pull it out. Kind of hold it up. Everybody's like holding their wallet up. And he's like, okay, I want you to do something right now. I want you to take your wallet and give it to the person beside you, but not your spouse. You're like, preacher, I don't want to give my wallet to my spouse. The marriage seminar is coming up soon. That's another series. Give your wallet or your purse to a stranger. You're like, ooh, that's weird. Well, we're just in church. Everybody's honest, right? (laughs) That's funny. But anyway, so take your wallet, take your purse, pass it to the person beside you. Now, they all did that. Then the pastor said, okay, we're now going to receive today's offering. And I want you to give the most generous offering you've ever given in your life. And you can imagine a lot of people got nervous. Some like, I ain't nervous. I don't got a dime in that wallet. But the point is this, does money have a hold of you? And so this whole question about your step, you know, beginning, consistent, tithing, expanding, extravagant, don't make it about money. It's not about money. It's about my heart. It's about who leads my life. It's about what I treasure. Does God have all of me? I'm telling you, money can make people do some stupid stuff. Years and years ago, there was a book out called The Day America Told the Truth. People got very honest in an anonymous survey. And they said, what would you do for $10 million? One out of four people said they'd abandon their family. Same results. They dropped it down to $3 million. Help me, class. Same results. I'm telling you, when God doesn't have your heart and the Lord Jesus isn't your leader, you can just step into some pretty bad stuff that can destroy your life. Here's a question people have been asking me in the series. I keep getting this question over and over again. Pastor Jeff. Are you going to talk about other ways to be generous? So we get this, you know, generous with our money, but are there other ways to be generous? Absolutely. But it always starts with our finances. If we're not being generous with our finances, it is a very slim chance that we'll be generous in other areas. But yes, you can be generous in other areas. And I thought I'd just take just a pause for a moment and, uh, and, and mention a few. So here's one way we can be generous. Live generously with gratitude. With gratitude. That just means thank yous. Thank people that do things for you. Express thanksgiving. Write a little note. Write a handwritten note. Thank them for the service they provide. For the care that they give. Attach the note with a gift card. Show thankfulness by being generous. And give, just give a little Starbucks card. Give a little Chick-fil-A card. Give a little card to whatever just to say, just because I'm thankful for you. Be a good tipper. You're not living generously if you're stingy in your tips. Some of us in this room have a background that we worked in the food industry. And you know that tips to a server, that's the money they make. And so show your generosity. Don't leave a a tip that does not represent a generous heart. Be very generous to your server. Let them know that you appreciate them. Uh, do this to the person that cuts your hair. Do this to the person that, that takes your groceries to the car. I remember when um, I was, uh, Josiah, you were with me. We were in Dallas at a meeting, and, and, and this busboy was breaking down tables. He, didn't, he wasn't serving our, he wasn't our waiter. He's busting down tables. And he was beside us at uh, another table, busting them down, you know, taking all the dirty dishes away. And, and he looked like he just had a rough life. And I just felt so compelled to, to give him some money. I had a $20 bill and I just folded over and I said, hey man, thanks for the great job you're doing. Bless you. And he looked at me and looked at the 20 and he said, this is the first time someone's ever given me a tip. But boys don't get tips, I guess. So what would happen if we just like a couple years ago, I started leaving a tip for those that clean my hotel room when I'm staying in a hotel room. I don't even know who they are. I don't see them. But, but I'll, I'll take the little sticky pad from the hotel logo and I'll write, have a beautiful day. And I'll do the best smiley face I can do. And I'll, I'll, I'll leave a generous tip. I don't know who they are, but they might be a single mom. It might, it might be a grandmother that's raising her grandkids. Could be anything. Live with generosity. Let me tell you something. How you treat those that serve you reveal your character. How we treat people that serve us reveal our integrity. 
And so show generosity with gratitude. Show generosity with affirmation. That means praise people. And you know what? Sometimes we stink at this because we will go up and praise someone and, and we do it in such a weird way. It's almost like we make them feel so bad about how we're about to praise them. We, we say things like, you know, I don't want to give you the big head. I don't want to swell your head all up, but you do pretty good. Would you shut up with that, please? I mean, you're pulling the cloud over the, over the compliment you want to give them. You're making them feel like a snail by saying, I don't want you to get puffed up. Just, just praise them. Or, or when we do it, we do something like this, and this is really, really weird. I'm sure everybody tells you this. I'm sure everybody lets you know that you're a great singer. I'm sure that everybody knows that you're great with kids. I'm going to tell you something. Not everybody tells them that because most folks aren't generous with compliments. And they need you to tell them that. And so don't go with this attitude like, well, you know, I'm sure everybody's telling you this, so I'll just tell you as well. Don't do that. Or don't be super spiritual. Some people are more spiritual than Jesus Christ. You know what I'm talking about? Well, I want to tell you something, but all glory goes to God. God gets the glory. Only God. But you're a pretty good singer. Oh, quit that. They know God's given them that gift. Just cut to the chase and say, you are gifted and God is using you. I think the reason we set up our compliments We've got too much stinking pride just to give someone pure praise. We make it about us and not the person we're wanting to encourage. And so be generous with affirmation. Be generous with time. Anytime you show up to a kid's basketball game, you're being generous. Anytime you go to a friend's family member's funeral, you're being generous. Anytime you take your neighbor's trash cans up to their house you're being generous anytime you do something for someone you are giving the best present of all time you can be generous for your service by serving other people and every time I serve you I am dying to myself so there's many ways that we can be generous write this down generous living is not an act we do it's a way we live stop making generosity random acts of kindness and just make it your DNA just make it how you roll. Just make it that it's just the way of life for you and your family. We choose to live generously. And watch God put a smile on your face as it puts a smile on his heart. So my pastor's heart's coming out right here. Because see, this is something I want for all of us. I want us to embody this, this value of the blessing of generous living. And I believe it's really a way that is an indication that we're growing as a disciple. We are growing in the likeness of Jesus. And, and Jesus shows us this beautiful story in John 6. Woo, we finally made it to John 6. And in John 6, there's this incredible story that is in all four Gospels. And it's Jesus' way of teaching his disciples to live generously and to trust God. And I think God's going to have something for you to hear before we make our commitment today with our challenge card. Let me read it to you. John 6 and let's read this passage of Scripture. After this, Jesus crossed over to the far side of the Sea of Galilee, also known as the Sea of Tiberias. A huge crowd kept following him wherever he went because they saw his miraculous signs as he healed the sick. Then Jesus climbed a hill and sat down with his disciples around him. It, it, it was nearly time for the Jewish Passover celebration. Jesus soon saw a huge crowd of people coming to look for him. Jesus turned to Philip and said, where can we buy bread to feed all these people? Jesus was testing Philip, for he already knew what he was going to do. Philip replied, even if we work for months, we wouldn't have enough money to feed them. Then Andrew, Simon Peter's brother, spoke up. There's a young boy here with Five barley loaves and two fish. But what good is that with this huge crowd? Jesus said, tell everyone to sit down. So they all sit down on the grassy slopes. The men alone numbered about 5,000. Then Jesus took the loaves, gave thanks to God, and distributed them to the people. Afterward, he did the same thing with the fish. 
And they all ate as much as they wanted. After everyone was full, Jesus told his disciples, now gather the leftovers so that nothing is wasted. So they picked up the pieces and filled 12 baskets with scraps left by the people who had eaten from the five barley loaves. What an incredible story. Now, let me give you, in these 13 verses, there's one big idea. You got to write it down. You got to write it down. I'm not a note taker in church. Please be a note taker today. It could change your life. Here's the big idea about these 13 verses. Listen, here it is. When we are generous, God shows up. When I'm generous, God shows up in my life. When Becky and I are generous, God shows up in our marriage. When Jeff, Becky, Macy, and Josiah are generous, God shows up in our family. When Pastor Jeff leads Christ's place to be generous, we see God show up at Christ's place. Whatever step you take today, when you're generous, you're going to see God show up in a big way. So in this miracle that happened, happened in all, it is written in all four Gospels, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, we see what it means when generosity becomes a movement. We see what it means to live generously. Here's the first lesson God is showing us. Write it down. Generosity is an opportunity to test our faith. It is always an opportunity for God to test your faith. Notice in verse 6 it said, Jesus tested Philip. The Lord already knew he was going to feed this crowd, but it was a test to see what Philip would do. So this step you're going to take in a moment, this step that Becky and I are going to take in a moment, it's a test. Here's the test. Are we going to trust God? Here's the test. Do we believe if we give more, God will provide for our needs? Here's the test. Do we believe that if we trust God and meet needs, will God meet our needs? See, so many of us, we have this like fear mentality. We think if we are generous, we're going to miss out on something. If we are generous, we won't have enough left for us. And so there is a test that God is putting before his disciples. Are they going to trust Jesus to meet the needs of all the thousands of people there that day were hungry? Can we really like test God? He's given me a test. So can we like test God to see if he really will come through? I know that sounds weird and kind of disrespectful to say testing God, but did you know actually in the Bible, God invites us to test him when we are living generously? Look at this screen, uh, the screen behind me, and let me read a verse from Malachi. Malachi, it's in the New Testament. If you do, if you live generous, I will open the windows of heaven for you. I will pour out a blessing so great you won't have enough room to take it in. Try it. Then listen to what God says. Wow. Put me to the test. God said, test me. Some of you on this card, you know, you're going to check in a moment which one you're going to be. And, and Becky and I, we've already made our uh, decision as God has led us. We're going to be an expanding giver. We're checking there. But right above the expanding is like this hand tone. Do you see it? Something called a 90-day tithe challenge. We're, we're putting a challenge before some of our people that aren't tithing. Try it. Try it in March, try it in April, try it in May. Keep you a little journal. Write down every time you give back the tenth, write what God does. Watch what God happens. I'm, well, the men look at me right now, if you're beside your wife and y'all aren't tithing, dude, would you, would you lead the way? Would you do this right now, sir? Because I'm going to tell you something. I'm talking to the men that are leading their families. If you'll like grab your hand and squeeze it right now and say, we're going to trust God. It will be amazing what God will do in your marriage to build your faith, to build the trust in the hearts of your children toward God. He is inviting us to trust him in this area of being generous. And this whole time, it was a test for Philip. This is a test that God has put in front of us. I'll tell you something else about we see in this text today, and it's this. In generosity, it's not about the amount that counts. I want you to look at something. This is fascinating to me. Then Andrew spoke up and said, I found a kid. I found a boy. And he doesn't have much. Five barley loaves, two fish. But look what Andrew says. But what good is this among this big crowd? So let me, let me, let me show you what the boy had. So I, I got a little visual aid today. It's about what this little boy had. Just a little kid. And he had, he had a little basket, something like that. And he had, he had two fish, two fishies, two fishies. 
Woo, they stink it. And so two fish. And then he had, he, had a little, he had some five loaves of bread. Now, this is pretty generous because in real, real terms, the fish that he had were smaller. These are like the fish that some of you men catch. You know, like, honey, I caught one big today. Woo, it was big, big. I'm lying, I'm dying. He just fell on the floor dead. And so, and, and then the bread, they, they were more like, like small little wafers, like, like, like maybe almost quarter-sized half-dollar pancakes. So this is all he had. Now, use your imagination with me. There's a, thousands of people out there. They're all hungry. Their stomachs are, 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 are roaring with hunger. And so around looking for lunch, looking for food, looking for food. That'd take all day. You know what I want to really believe? I want to believe that the kid, he just came up and volunteered his lunch. I really want to believe that he was not hard to find because he just came up and said, can this help? You know what I love about children? Their capacity to believe God for big stuff. There's just something about the heart of a child that when they talk to Jesus about granddaddy's cancer, they really believe that God will just step down and heal their granddaddy of stomach cancer. There's just something about a child when they're praying for their mom and dad and a need in their life. They're believing big that God will do it. And here's this little kid, and he said, will this help? Will this help? And it was a poor man's lunch. It wasn't, it wasn't ice lunch. It was very meager and very poor. But he offered what he had. It's not the amount. It's the heart. And he's offering it to Jesus. And it's kind of disappointing how, Phil, how Andrew treats this. He's like, you know, <laughs> it's not much, Lord. What can this, do? can this do? I think Jesus was disappointed in Andrew. I think he's looking at Andrew like, seriously? I mean, you've watched me like walk on the water? You've watched me like raise up the woman in name that lost her boy? I mean, you, you've watched me do, you, seriously? You don't think I can do this? And then I think Jesus was saying, don't you ever minimize someone's generosity because God can take little and do a lot with it. I want, to, I, want, I want you to write this next truth down. Write this next truth down. Generosity always multiplies. It always multiplies. They started with five loaves of bread, two fish. It feeds a thousand of several thousand people because generosity unleashes power. Generosity sets up a miracle. Generosity. Look, what did we say earlier? When we are generous, God shows up. When we are generous, God shows up. The little boy was generous. This is all I got, mister. And God showed up and he multiplied it. God honored it. God blessed it. There's two types of people in this room right now. Who, which one are you? Those who come to God for a handout and those who come to God to be a handout. There's a group of people that they want God to do something for them. And thank God there's a group of people, they want God to do something through them. Because they believe they're a conduit, not a cul-de-sac. And, and we believe that God puts things in our hand for needs to be met. And he uses us as a vehicle. And when we're generous, it multiplies. Write this last truth down and we're coming to land the plane right now. We cannot out-generous God. We cannot out-generous God. It was a test. How would they respond? It's not so much the amount, it's your heart. And when I'm generous, God will multiply it. And when I give back to God, I cannot outgive God. Look at verse 12 and 13. You gotta see it. You can't miss this. You're looking at it. After everyone was full, Jesus told his disciples, now gather the leftovers so that nothing is wasted. So they picked up the pieces and filled 12 baskets with scraps left by the people who had eaten from the five barley loaves. I don't want you to miss this. I don't want you to miss this. What started with the little boy by giving his lunch, God touched it. What's the point? That you cannot out generous God because God began to honor it. God began to touch it. God began to bless it. And what started off as a small little lunch from a little boy that didn't have much, God put his hand on it and God multiplied it. And God took all that food and he fed everybody. And when everybody was full of the food after it was all done, they began to gather up what was remaining. And there were 12 baskets. One, two, three. Would you count them with me? Four. You counting? Five, six, seven, eight. 
help me. Nine, somebody help me. 10, somebody help me. 11. Do you see what God does? You can't out generous God. You're looking at these steps and saying, well, I could never be here. Don't you limit God. Maybe God's going to get you here, but it's a test if you'll get here. Maybe God wants you here, but it's a test if you'll just start tithing. Do you see? When you are faithful with what God has given you, God will multiply it, and you can never out-generous God. Listen to the scripture. We've been teaching this over and over again in the month of February. Remember this. A farmer who plants only a few seeds will get a small crop, but the one who plants generously will get a generous crop. You must each decide in your heart how much to give. And don't you give reluctantly or in response to pressure. For God loves a person who gives cheerfully. And God will generously provide what you need. And you will always have everything you need and plenty left over. For God is the one who provides seed for the farmer and bread to eat. In the same way, he will provide an increase an increase in your resources, and then produce a great harvest of generosity in you, and you will be enriched in every way so that you can always be generous. And when we take your gifts to those in need, they in turn will thank God. You cannot out generous God. Mr. David Green was with us last week. This man came out of poverty. When he started Hobby Lobby with that meager amount in his garage, and he and Barbara just trusted God, but they said, we're going to begin by giving back to God 10%. Now they give like, what, 60, north of 60% of everything they make. They are a billion-dollar company. Everything that they make, over 60%, they're giving back to God. They're not going broke. And God begins to bless, and God begins to multiply, because you can't outgive God. So here's my question to you right now. Are you going to take a step? I am. Who's going to take a step with me today? Will you? Like, well, Pastor, I, I want to do this. I want to do it really bad. I think I understand it all. Maybe I could put it in a way that's just immensely practical. I read a little paperback book years and years ago, and it gave something called the three Ps. It is brilliant. So simple, but brilliant about how to live generously. Three Ps. The first P is priority. Priority, and we become generous when we make it a priority. And so all of us in this room that will take a step today, what we're saying is this is the priority in our life. I'm just saying this in love. And you know I love you. You know I love you. If you don't take a step today to prioritize generosity, I tell you this in love, you probably never will. You have a moment right now. Your church gave a whole month to study the subject of generosity. We've been listening to God. We've been reading devotions. God's been using Mr. Green and, and Pastor Jeff's messages. And if we're not at the point where we'll at least take a step, it's an indication that we're in bondage and we're not free and we'll probably never take the step. We make things priority when we take steps. When we take steps, priority. Generosity always has to have a place to start. Don't ever think generosity is for rich people. It's for people. It's just for people who will trust God. And then when we're generous, God shows up. Here's the second P, percentage. All these, you know, have percentages. Why percentage and why not dollar amounts? It wouldn't be fair. See, see, my dollar amount might be different than your dollar amount. Because God blesses us in different ways. So someone that's in college, their dollar amount looks very different from a man who's been working for the same company for 20 years. So what does God do? He allows us to understand something called percentages like a tithe or even things that we're suggesting as a beginning or a consistent giver. You're starting somewhere with a percentage and that allows you to represent the blessings of God in your life. By the way, there is a story and you all know it. Jesus is watching the offering in the temple and a widow woman comes in and she gives, did she give, did she give a bunch of coins or just a few? A few, only two mites, two little coins. And she put them in there, the receptacle. And then all the wealthy Pharisees came and they were dumping all their coins in there. And Jesus said, that woman gave the most. You're like, no way. No, they gave out of their abundance. She gave her all. See, see, some people, they have a lot and a percentage wouldn't mean a lot to them. 
I mean, you think about someone just very, very, very wealthy. Don't call names, but someone that's just so wealthy. And if they were to say, let's say they just had millions of dollars and they wrote a check today for $1,000 to meet a need. That really wouldn't be a lot. But for someone that's making a very meager income, that'd be a lot. So when you think percentage, it allows you to represent how God has blessed you. And then, and then the last P is progressive. It just means you constantly take steps. Take steps. Some of you take this step here, and that's awesome. But you know what God might be calling you to do next year? Take another step. Take another step. Take another step. We're always progressing. We're always pro- Some of Did you hear Mr. Green? Man, he was awesome. He said, and I think the, my, my most favorite moment with Mr. Green is when he prayed for us. And he prayed for us and said, Lord, help many in this room to get off the tricycle. He called, he, called, he called it a tricycle. He said, help us to trust you to get off the tricycle and grow in our giving so that we can soar with wings and be free. Wouldn't that be awesome if someone took that step today and said, I'm going to honor God, and you have no idea what God wants to do through your obedience. We have a choice. Look, look, here's our choice. You can take your basket with the two fish and the five loaves, and you can say, no, mine. Man, no, I can't take a step. If I give these smelly fishies, I won't have anything. I'll have nothing if I give these up. No, my bread. That's terrible. My bread. Mine. I'm not going to give it. I've worked for this. All you preachers have an angle. What's your last name? Crook. Yeah, I figured. I figured. They're missing out. They think God's taking something from them. The little boy didn't say, mine, mine. He said, here, Jesus. And when you give what you have, no matter what it might be, Jesus multiplies it. You can't out-generous God. One, two, three, four, on and on and on. And it all started with this. This morning, we've got a challenge card. Some of you brought it to church. Some of you just looking at it now. Here's what I'm going to invite you to do. I'm going to invite you to live out what we've been saying for weeks. Generosity is more about what, not what God wants from you, but for you. And I'm going to invite you to take your, don't sign it. Don't you sign it. Don't you write your name on there. Don't. It's between you and God. And when you take that card, you take it and you open it and you keep one. Tear it like that. You You keep this one. (laughs) And this is the one that you're going to bring today. You're going to check a box. I'm going to be a beginning giver. Pastor Jeff, I'm frightened, but I'm going to give my little basket. I'm going to be consistent. Pastor Jeff, we just need a tithe. God's blessed us with so much. You read that story a few weeks ago about that couple in our church, never have tithe. And they begin to tithe and God begin to bless them. And I'm going to check right now, 90 day tithe. I'm going to do it. Squeeze your wife's hand and say, honey, we're going to do it. We're going to trust God. It could change the whole future of your family. Wow. Future generations. Well, there's our box. Becky and I, we're checking, expanding. She'll be bringing ours in just a moment or maybe extravagant. And so you're going to take it. Here's what I want you to do. If God is giving you freedom to do it today, come put it in one of the baskets. Let it be, let it be your statement to say it's a test. It's not the amount. God will multiply it, and you can't out generous God. I want boys and girls, you feel freedom to do this. This is not something for older people. Who brought this to Jesus? A senior adult man? Who brought this to Jesus? Who? A little boy. Children come. Students, college students. Man, I'm in college. I don't have anything. But if you start right now prioritizing to live generously, You have no idea what awaits you. You finish college, God begins to open up doors of opportunity, all because you made a commitment to say, God, would you multiply it? And so in a moment, we're going to stand, and there's baskets everywhere, and you can come, and you can put your card in the basket, and then you keep this for you. It's a commitment that you're reminding yourself. Pastor Jeff, can can you answer a question? You know, you're talking a lot about generosity, but can I just say what's going on with me? My marriage is falling apart. I just got the worst news in my life. 
I had a painful experience a few days ago and my heart is broken. I am struggling with addictions or issues. Do you have a word for me, Pastor Jeff? God has a word for you and it's this. He's a generous God. He knows you by name. He keeps your tears in a bottle. That's what the prophet said in the Old Testament. He inscribed your name on the palm of his hand. And whatever need is in your life today, a generous God loves you and cares for you. And he wants to minister to you. And he wants you to draw near to him. And he will draw near to you. And this altar is open. If you need prayer, we'd love to pray for you. I don't want anyone to leave here today without knowing the generosity of God. That he loves you and cares for you and wants to come into your life. Pray with me. Father. Thank you for this opportunity now as a church. We've been on this journey about living generous. We've learned, but now we want to live it. We just don't want to audit the series. We want to, by faith, trust you. And I can't wait to see what you're going to do. I think about a gentleman that came up to me after the first service and said, I can't wait to see what God is going to do from the commitments that we've made. And I feel that same way. And I want to just pray for the family right now that the step they're making, it is huge. They've never done anything like this before. God, prove yourself faithful. And there are some in this room, they've been real generous, but you're calling more generosity out of them. And God, you want to take them to another level of blessing. And I'm praying for them right now that they will not believe the false narrative that we can ever outgive God and we will never run out when God is our source. And so help us right now to obey you. And thank you for this moment to just reenact the miracle that's in all four Gospels. What started small was multiplied by a generous God. Give us courage to obey in the name of Jesus. We make this prayer. Amen. All of the room, would you stand with me? We're going to worship and sing. And I'm going to invite anyone right now just to start coming out. Find one of these baskets. Drop your card in there. There's no organization to this. Just get into the flow of the Spirit. Come with your family. Obey God. Let's worship as we sing. Worthy of every song we could ever sing. Worthy of all the praise we could ever breathe. Worthy of every breath we could ever breathe, we live for you. Jesus, the name above every other name. Jesus, the only one who could ever say. Worthy of every breath we could ever breathe, we live for you. Oh, we live for you. Holy, there is no one like you. There is none beside you. Open up my eyes in wonder and show.
praise God for what we've been a part of today, what we've seen him do. Amen. You can be seated, please. Amen, church. We're at the portion of our service. It's our generosity moment. It's a chance for us to give back to God. Boy, I just feel like it's been such a beautiful thing this morning that we as a church have said together, God, we, we want to be a generous people. And uh, it's so beautiful to see the youngest among us to the oldest among us saying, God, we want to bless you by being generous as you are generous. Church, we just want to say this morning, thank you for your generosity. You are such a giving church. Right behind me on the screens, you see there's so many ways other than financial generosity that you give. Nothing would happen on Sunday if you didn't give of your time and give of yourself. You see some of these beautiful people on the screen. Top, top right there is Miss Susie bone that greets you every week as you come in the door. And Mr. Giff Sizemore working with middle school boys every Wednesday night. That's an extra crown in heaven right there. And these guys in the production team and the connection room and the preschool rocking babies. Every week, church, you are so, so generous. Thank you for all that you do. Let's have a word of prayer and then today we'll take up our offering. Jesus, thank you for this church that's so generous. Lord Jesus, thank you for being a generous God. We pray that in everything we do, Lord, all the commitments we've made to you this morning, God, that our heart would be completely yours. We pray that every dollar that's given through Christ's place, Lord, will go to continue to build your kingdom in the world. Lord Jesus, now as we give, we pray that our hearts will be so full of joy and generosity that they would just spill out, Lord. And we love you, Jesus, and we ask this in your name. Amen. <laughs> 